Hello there, my fellow primogenitors, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Today's episode is gonna be dedicated to yet another tier 3 chapter, aka the ones which take only one video to cover. I didn't make a poll about it this time, because I know at least one person who really likes this chapter we're gonna talk about today, and I wanted it to be a surprise for that person, and maybe a few others. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Genesis chapter. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed and learn a couple of things about them, shall we? Of the thousand or so space marine chapters existing throughout the Imperium, the great majority can be considered Codex Astartes compliant. One such chapter is the Genesis chapter. Founded in the dark days of the Horus Heresy, the Genesis chapter is a primogenitor or firstborn chapter, created during the second founding. Like its forebears, the Genesis chapter is made of highly disciplined and courageous warriors. Upon their inception, the Genesis chapter's first battle wrested the planet Newfound from the clutches of the treacherous word bearers, and it has been their homeworld ever since. The chapter has remained dogmatically faithful to the teachings of the Codex penned by the Primarch for ten millennia now. They have always had the proud distinction of being the very first of the primogenitors of the Ultramarines Legion. It was formed from some of the noblest Ultramarines veterans surviving the Horus Heresy. They have always venerated Robot Gilliman to some degree, and were one of the first chapters to seek out the Primarch upon his revival following the Ultramar campaign of the 13th Black Crusade. They knelt as one and pledged themselves to the eternal service of the resurrected Lord Commander of the Imperium. As such, they were also among the first of the existing chapters of Astartes to have their ranks bolstered by the Primaris Marines created during the Ultima founding. A couple of notable campaigns that they took part in include The Cleansing of the Ulic Sector At the end of the 41st millennium, a series of exterminatus missions were carried out across the Ulic Sector by space marines from the Death Strike, the Flame Falcons, and the Iron Hands chapters. The Genesis chapter performed a series of destructive missions on those worlds in the Ulic Sector not yet consumed by High Fleet Leviathan in order to prevent the hive mind from gaining momentum and further fueling itself on a precious bioresource. The Wa Iron Tooth Campaign The Genesis chapter, alongside its primogenitors, the Ultramarines, engaged the growing power of Orc Wa Iron Tooth and successfully threw back the Greenskin Horde. The Plague Wars the Genesis chapter contributed six companies to the Spear of Espandor campaign of the Plague Wars, which resulted in the Loyalist forces retaking the Espandor system and cutting off the supply lines of the Nurglite invasion. As befits a Codex-compliant chapter, the Genesis chapter is split into ten companies, each one a hundred marines strong, led by one captain. The first company consists of battle-hardened veterans, and it is, invariably, the most powerful of the chapter. It is also the only company capable of fielding warriors clad in Terminator armor. The second through fifth companies are the chapter battle companies, and are composed of a mix of tactical, assault, and devastator squads. Each battle company is a self-sufficient unit capable of meeting almost any threat and dealing with it. These form the backbone of the chapter and bear the brunt of the fighting. The 6th through 9th companies are the reserve companies of the chapter, and each one comprises squads of one particular type of Astartes. The 6th and 7th companies are tactical companies, the 8th company is the assault company, and the 9th company is the devastator company. The 10th company is made up of scout marines, who are the chapter's recruits. The divisions were decided upon 10,000 years ago by Robot Gilliman, and they have served the chapter well since that day. All Genesis chapter scout marines undertook at least one pilgrimage to McCrag in their lifetime, to look upon the image of the Primarch frozen in stasis. 
They believe that their training is incomplete until they knelt in spiritual communion for at least one day at the feet of the Gene Father. Since Robert Gilliman's resurrection, however, this custom has become obsolete. Each Genesis chapter battle brother does their best to study and memorize the codex, so as to enable an individual company to have an entire record of the codex's teachings contained within the mind of every single brother. Because of their very close ties with their progenitor chapter, the Genesis chapter and the Ultramarines frequently undertake joint operations. The squads of the Genesis brothers will routinely fill gaps within the Ultramarine companies should they fall below strength due to attrition or other commitments. This includes the secondment of individual Genesis battle brothers to fill empty specialist positions like that of librarians or tech marines. They are dogmatically loyal to the memory of Robot Gilliman, whom they venerate not only as their founder, but as the savior of the Imperium. These Adeptus Astartes hold to the wisdom of the Codex Astartes in every possible way. The chaplains of the Genesis chapter regard the words of the Codex as utterly sacrosanct, going to great lengths to ensure the chapter's adherence to its tenets. If there is a point of contention in regards to the Codex, it is thoroughly debated, with the opinions of ultramarine chaplains as a recourse for final ratification. This, in turn, ensures there is never a doctrinal rift between progenitor and primogenitor. Some notable Genesis chapter members include The current chapter master is known as Air Lloyd. Captain Porton is the captain of the Genesis chapter second company. He was also made into the Tetrarch of Andermung, a world in the southern reach of Ultramar. Captain Aeneas this guy was captain of the third company. He met his end aboard the strike cruiser Diadem Mantle when the third company's assault against the Night Lord's tenth company failed. Afterwards, Talos Valcoran ordered the Echo of Damnation to destroy the vessel. Ptolemian Saralan This guy was a company champion of the third company. A formidable warrior zealously loyal to the Emperor, he also took part in the assault conducted by the chapter on Sagualsa against the treacherous Night Lord's warband of the Chaos Champion Talos Valcoran. Wielding his mighty Thunder Hammer, he fought against the Soul Hunter's first Claw Squad. Unfortunately, he didn't survive the encounter as he was impaled upon Talos's power sword by the severely wounded Night Lord known as Zarl. Ptolemian praised the God Emperor before being beheaded. However, Zarl died from blood loss from the wounds Ptolemian inflicted upon him soon after the confrontation. One of the most prized relics of the chapter is known as Talius's Insight. This is an ancient treatise written by the Genesis chapter hero Talius. Those adhering most fervently to the Codex Astartes occasionally find service in the Death Watch to be a trial with no standard chapter or squad configurations taking precedence over the urgent needs of the Vigil. Such battle brothers are often pointed to the writings of Talius of the Genesis chapter, who applied the core doctrines of the Adeptus Astartes to the duties of the Death Watch with exacting thoroughness. His original work, a collection of annotations to the Codex Astartes itself, is kept within a stasis vault in Watch Fortress Ariok and granted to the most trusted kill team leaders to assist them in their strategies. The Genesis chapter parallels the Ultramarine's forebears very closely in terms of chapter markings and badges of rank. However, the color of their armor is primarily red. The Aquila or Imperialis on the chest guard is yellow. The white squad specialty symbol on the right shoulder guard designates a tactical specialty. The color of the shoulder plate trim indicates company number in accordance with the codex. The badges of the sergeants are blue instead of red, but otherwise there are very few differences between the chapters in terms of rank or company iconography. Senior sergeants of veteran status are proclaimed by a golden skull added to the helm, while less senior sergeants wear a white skull in its place. Veteran status is indicated by a white helmet stripe. The chapter badge is a black Greek letter lambda, or an upside-down V, on top of a black-outlined white triangle. 
This is centered on a field of red. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these fellows known as the Genesis chapter for today. Quite a standard chapter, one might even say boring. But hey, at least the boring ones don't assault your ships to steal your dreadnoughts, or abandon you in the middle of battle to go hunting for traitors from 10,000 years ago. Is the Genesis chapter among your favorite loyalist chapters? What do you like or dislike most about them? As always, you are free to express your opinions in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you'd like to be a bit more up to date with my content, don't forget the bell notification icon. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.